everyone. Today, this is an ambulance, obviously. It's a 1993 Ford F-350 ambulance. It was a fire aid ambulance on Squim, Washington. For most of its life, it sat there in the garage where it was regularly maintained but lightly used. This received annual maintenance. I spoke to the maintenance guy at the Clallam County Firehouse there who, who knew this vehicle personally. And uh, he said it mostly sat in the garage. They really didn't put many miles on it each year, but they annually serviced it with all the things that this 7.3 IDI International diesel engine needs, which is mainly just fuel filters and coolant upkeep with proper SCA additives every two years. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically give you this outside walk around. So as you can see, it was very well taken care of. It looks pretty much new. I mean, for a 26-year-old vehicle, 27-year-old vehicle, it's as good as it gets, really. Now the ambulance box was built by Road Rescue Inc., as you can see right here. And that is a company that builds very high-end ambulance boxes knew this thing was probably equivalent standards today, about 200 grand. Um, back in 93, that was probably about $90,000. So I just wanna go ahead and show you all of these amazing compartments. But first I'm gonna clip on. We've got this first chest, which houses the part of the in-house electric. This was built out previously by an electrical engineer. So this is all done to uh, professional standards right here. The blaze fu blade fuse holder and house lighthouse batteries. These can easily be upgraded to something a little beefier. All these compartments have lights in them, which turn on when you open. <clears throat> here is just your general huge compartment houses your compressor for your rear airbags, which this has. I'll show you on the other ones. This is a dual rear wheel axle. I believe it's the W4 axle, so that's, uh, it's got a limited slip differential. Here is another rear compartment. Um, where your propane would live for your heater. This is all plumbed for propane. There's a Wave 6 heater inside, catalytic heater, so you can hook up propane in here and it gets nice and toasty inside with that running. And all of these compartments lock. And the action on that is quite nice. Very solid. These ambulance shells are all aluminum and they're insulated as well. They use foam insulation in between the two layers. I'll show you this one. This is essentially a ski compartment. It goes from floor to ceiling, probably about nine feet tall. Put your skis or anything else along in there. Here's another Those generally used compartment. There's some straps in there. And uh, now you got the lights. Here's a horizontal compartment. It can also be accessed from under the couch dinette bed inside. Again, they all lock. Just reiterating that. Another one. Some cog food in there. 
obviously put whatever you'd like. And then this one, which is another shared inside outside compartment. If I open this door, we can uh, turn all these compartment lights on as well from a switch in the dash. You also have AC power here. You can run off your inverter and your short power. Walk around the front. Lights, light bar, sirens, these all work. Most of them are hooked up. The sirens are not, but that's a simple thing to hook up. There's a front mounted hitch. So you can hook up a hauler for your motorcycle, firewood, storage boxes, whatever you like. Here's your shore power connection for your 15 amp hookup. So you can hook up at campsites or at any place where you can you want to get some extra juice. All right, so let's go into the front here. Take a quick look at your door cards. Given that this was a service vehicle, although it was a fire aid ambulance, did not get private regular use and abuse, which is hard to find in a lot of these ambulances. A lot of them have 150, 200,000 miles by this time or more, and they're just beat on. Not the case with this one. So hopping into the driver's seat. You can see all of your switches, rear dome lights, which are turning the lights on and off. I'll show you that in the rear later. This is your battery switch. Cuts off your battery so you don't end up draining it or killing it. This has dual batteries in the engine compartment as well, as most diesels do. So you've got all these other switches, which all work. You have left, rear, and right floodlights, which are amazing. They're super bright and just they work really well when we took this out camping, uh, super useful. Among other things like all your flashers, strobes, light bar, backup alarm on and off, your air ride, throttle up if you want to use it for PTO purposes and whatnot, you can throttle. And your battery here, here, so when you turn this on, you see that it goes up. So I'm just gonna start the engine for you guys. Okay, so we got the key in. Wait for the glow plugs to warm up. There we go. So you can see the mileage there. 39, 744. Those are original miles. And everything works as it should. It has the E40D automatic transmission. That's a four-speed transmission with your overdrive switch here, which works properly. You have your transfer case here for your two high, four high, four low, and neutral. That works wonderfully as well. Original tape deck, all of that. And let's see what else. You've got these seats which adjust forward and back. Kind of a heavy duty high traffic flooring here, which we've deep cleaned. And yeah, this is a rare ambulance. This has a pass through. A lot of these chassis box ambulances do not have a pass through in the pickup form. So it's pretty sweet because you can just hop back, as I'll show you right now. So we're passing through the submarine. Alright, now we're in the back. I'm going to turn the lights on. So, taking a look in the rear space. This has been partially converted already into a camper could use more conversion if you want, or it's, you know, as is, it's totally campable. We've used it, it has a heater, bed, 
tons of storage, high end, high quality storage, lighting, batteries, all the essentials. It's really only missing a fridge and, you know, a stove. If you don't, if you want a permanent one, if you don't use a camping stove, take it in and out. Um, but giving you the rundown here, we have white pine tongue and groove with a blue pine bookshelf. This is all really solid. Um, recently installed and upgraded within the past year. We have kind of an L or a U-shaped dinette. This table, very solid swivels. It also comes out and drops down here where you use this back cushion and this whole becomes one bed. You can sleep two people there comfortably. Um, looking over here, we've got a catalytic, the Olympian Camco Wave 6 catalytic safety heater. This is about a 6,000 BTU heater, plumbed into propane in that rear left aft compartment. So you get 6,000 BTUs of heat. This is also mounted in a, in a great way on some screws. It lifts and you can pull it off. You can get feet for these or it stands as is. And there's plenty of extra propane line as you guys saw. You can move this around to heat up, extra heat up whatever area you'd like. Um, so it's great for that. I just wanna show you guys these storage compartments. These are heavy duty. Um, they also open up like this. And they have gas struts, but those are kind of shot after all the years of sitting. Easily replaced. I didn't think it was necessary. Everything still works really nicely. So you have that, you have more storage down here. Same situation. You also have this originally part of the ambulance seat with a seat belt. You have more storage under this as well. Kind of a stainless steel counter here with some ambulance accoutrement. Um, your dome lights, as you can see those work. It gets even brighter in here. Um, and this all runs with the engine off as well. Got your cot light, front, back, bench lights, O2 lights. You have more outlets here. And this, the underside of this is basically the inside of that outer storage compartment. You have another pass through here to that outer storage compartment. You have more storage up here. The same style as the others. You have a storage closet here, which you now there's a room in there and you also have a little inverter down there. I'll point this out. This is a heavy duty grab pole. Um, a great idea would be to hang a hammock on here. I'm sure this is rated for probably three, four hundred pounds plus. So that should be no problem though if you wanted to do that. Again, more storage. And then you have your shared inner outer storage here, which is, you know, this just on, on latches. These are all snaps. Boom, and that's the outside door. Really great for like loading groceries or just stuff that you want to use inside and outside. Actually, it's just really, really handy. So that's that. Here's one window, which is screened, and you can open that as you like. I have it locked right now, but there you go. These lights are on a dimmer as well. Recessed LED lights. 
show you behind here. This is essentially your cushion to make a full size bed. And anyways, guys, that's kind of the rundown on this puppy. It's for sale, located in Portland, Oregon. You've got your doors, these all lock from the inside as well. Like that is up. Excellent grab handles on all these. Everything is just overbuilt and solid. That's what I love about these ambulance builds. Everything is overbuilt. Again, you're getting a $200,000 rig for much less let's hop out this door you guys can listen to the engine you can see the floodlights turn on when you open the door as well when you have these As a front solid front axle. This has a gross combined weight rating of 19, I believe 17,000 pounds. So you could even hook up a hitch to this and tow 7,000 more pounds if you want. Dual fuel tanks, front and rear. Each one holds about 16 gallons. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. It's always fun to make these videos. If you have any questions about this rig, please do reach out to us, and I'd be happy to answer them. Oh, another thing, this is the 7.3 IDI engine. Before the power stroke, Ford had the 7.3 IDI. And basically, the 7.3 IDI is all mechanical. There are no electronics. This thing is rock solid as long as you keep up with your uh, oil filter, fuel filter changes, flush your coolant and add SCA additive every two years using the green standard coolant. That's really the best way to go for these older diesels. That's what they love. And they'll treat you right. They'll go four, five hundred, six hundred thousand miles before needing any sort of a rebuild. Um, that's why I love this rig. They're much cheaper to maintain too. They will parts. Everything is much less than power strokes. Even you know, if you need new injectors, if you need a new injection pump, all of these things are a lot less on a 7.3 IDI than even a 7.3 power stroke. Forget about the new 6.4 and 6.7, 6.0.